Okay, guys, I'm going to talk to you about feline hepatic lipidosis. Um, if you don't know what it is, um, it's pretty much feline fatty liver syndrome. This hits home for me because I actually have liver disease, um, specifically non-alcoholic. So I thought, what a better way to talk about it because, believe it or not, a lot of the symptoms are the same between humans and felines, and more probably as well as canines as well, but I'm just going to cover felines for today. Um, it is what it says. It's an accumulation of fat on the organ uh, due to the body not able to process the fat properly into usable energy. Um, pretty much what happens is, is, is you stop eating. Um, so it, <laughs> the funny thing about this disease is it can go from obesity to anorexia really fast. Um, so what happens is you stop eating and then the feline experiences malnutrition from loss of protein content. And then um, the body starts to use the fat that's been stored up and tries to convert that into lipoproteins for energy purposes. And then um, if that continues over a long period of time, then the liver doesn't know how to properly function at that point. And so what happens is the fat starts to accumulate on the liver, and that's not good because it's not processing things the way it should be. And you know how livers are. They're pretty much the thing that filters out everything next to the gallbladder. So um, it's not very good at all. Um, and the thing that is um, interesting about cats is that they're poor at metabolizing fat in general. So it's uh, something that you really got to watch out for in felines and um, making sure that you don't overfeed them or, you know, they consume things with a high fatty acid content. So um, it is one of the more common things, like I said, in cats, more uh, common in geriatric cats just because they already have digestive issues going on. And it can affect any breed. So it's not really, you know, selective. It's just if it happens, it happens. So. Um, causes unknown. Uh, they're still doing research trying to figure out exactly what the pinpoint is on it, but uh, like I said, probability is obesity, so it could play into a factor of genes. Um, you know, just like in humans, it's an insulin issue, so diabetes is one of the probable stems from it. Uh, more than likely, it could be also the same thing in a feline. You know, like I said, the symptoms are pretty interchangeable. Um, also, factors that can include, you know, having liver disease is, you know, moving, gaining or losing housemates, so that can include humans or other uh, pets. Uh, and then also just other organ diseases and other issues that can be related to it. And so, you know, like we have stress, so that just kind of compiles everything and it's not good and uh, just causes more issues than we'd like it to, so. And you have a little chubby kitty over there. I thought that was Yeah, that's good. Cute. Let's let's guess how much that weighs because uh, <laughs> I want to hear what's the heaviest cat you've actually been physically in the same room with? 20 pounds. 28 pounds. So are you saying that's 28 no, or I'm that's saying your that's record? 22 pounds. The biggest one I've seen is 28 pounds. Okay, I got 28 pounds here. 25. 30. Yeah, 30. Somebody saw 30? My grandma's cat's 23 because um, she decides to feed this cat canned smushy food three times a day, mm -hmm. full servings of okay, right. at a single serve. Yeah, so <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I would advise her not to do it, but my grandma persists that it's just his winter coat. Yeah. So. Now that brings up <laughs> that brings up a good point. Have you guys ever seen a chart where it says the cat weighs a certain amount, and then they figured out what a person at a certain height would weigh at that? No. Similar, we, we should find that out because in one of my other classes they did that. She had, can't remember who it was, they found it like a chart and had, okay, cat 20 pounds, you know, and then it showed a man and what he would weigh at that weight and then a woman. And it was like, it brings it home the point. Like, if your grandmother saw that, grandma, look at how that's the equivalent to this in a person, she'd probably go, Mm -hmm. I need to do something. We'll try to find that for you. And I've even been told myself that, like, considering my age, my weight, and my height, that, you know, it, it, it might look like it, but I am in no means obese. So it's just, I know it sounds funny. It sounds funny, but that's, well, you know, what Yeah, everybody's built so, different. You yeah, know, it's just, so. you know, whatever. Here's somebody got a comment. The uh, fattest cat uh, is 46 pounds. 46. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you it looked like this. Totally. Yeah. More than shadow, shadow yeah. is 40, 40, 40. Really? That's sad. Okay. Yeah, okay. so I forgot to point out that I'm sure you can tell, but right here, this is what a fatty liver looks like. Obviously, it's not a nice reddish color that it should be, and that's just because um, the body is having trouble processing that fat, so it turns it to yellow. I'm going to explain more about that in a little okay. bit. 
Um, so, so the common symptoms that you will see with fatty liver disease is it starts, like I said, with refusal of food, um, weight loss, and anorexia just because it's not feeling well, doesn't want to process the things, you know, and, think, uh, and anything in general like that. Um, next comes like lethargy, so if you're not feeling good, you're not going to want to do anything, you're just going to want to lay around and sleep all day. Um, vomiting, diarrhea can go either way, both at the same time, one or the other. Um, something else that's kind of notable is a downward flexation of the head and the neck, so they're constantly kind of like hunched over, like not quite sure if they're going to want to get sick or if like, you know, what, what they want to do. Um, jaundice, which I'm sure you all are aware, but that's mm -hmm. yellowing of the skin, so that's in the ear canal of a cat. That's a good example. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty yellow, um, so that, you know, it's kind of interesting. Um, drooling right here at this cat, so it's excessive drooling. Not like little Bub, the cat that has Down syndrome, but just in general. Muscle wasting, and then if not caught, eventually it'll turn into liver failure. So, yeah, those are just some of the symptoms. There are more, it just every case differs. Um, the diagnosis, so jaundice is a strong indicator, like I just showed you with that picture. Um, obviously, the yellowing of the skin, you can t clearly see that. And pretty much that comes from the fat accumulation from the body's, uh, not, like I said, not processing yet. So the liver turns that yellow color, and then since it's not processing the blood cells very efficiently, the pigmentation comes out of the red blood cells, like the yellow pigmentation, and then travels through the bloodstream, and then shows up on all parts of the body. So that's how that pops up. Um, uh, something else that they test for is blood testing that targets specific things in the liver. So for instance, abnormal or red, red blood cell size, I'm sorry, um, increased enzyme levels, and as well as alkaline phosphatase, which is your ALPs. Um, and those are great indicators because normally if those are extremely elevated, which are, then you know that it's a clear indication also that you have possible liberties of some sort. Um, your analysis, they test for the um, high levels of bilirubin, and I'm not quite sure exactly what that entails after you know they detect, detect that. But well, that's, bil that's bilirubin. That's like yeah. a break, breakdown process of the hemoglobin yeah. molecule. So, um, and then you got your RADs and your ultrasound. So like with the RADs, it will show um, like the, the size of the liver and then the ultrasound kind of shows how much fat is on there. Now it's not entirely accurate because they can't really determine the composition, like the percentage of it. So then that's when you would have to do a liver biopsy to officially confirm that. And they can do it through, like I said, biopsy or a needle aspirate just to take a chunk of liver and to test for how much <coughs> fat percentage is on there. So um, when they do the blood testing though, for instance, you have right here, this is a healthy cat, two years old, and this is what the normal cell count slash, you know, you know, view would be like. And then over here is obviously the one with the problems with the liver disease. And so you can tell there's a difference with the cells when it comes to filtering out all those um, nutrients and things like that and the fat. So it's a big difference. Um, it's kind of alarming, believe it or not, but that's what I'm talking about, the increased cell size. Um, so then we move on to treatments. Uh, there's different types of things, just like I said, depends on the case of the liver disease, but sometimes the doctors will administer sub cues, which are obviously is to help for electrolyte imbalances because of you know dehydration from vomiting and diarrhea, um, and also poor nutrition. Uh, vitamin supplementation just kind of depends as well. Normally they like to give a lot of the B complexes, you know, just to help get energy and other things like that going in the body. Um, thiamine and then co cobalumin. Um, so those are just some of the vitamins, but I know they, they could do more, just like I said, depends. Uh, another thing is aggressive tube feedings of continuing refusal food. So you see this poor kitty right here, um, you know, if they got a little cat there and everything that they're gonna have to inject the food through because obviously the cat's not willing to eat on its own. Um, and then also sp a specific dietary adjustments and but it also depends on how bad the liver disease is, and you know if you catch it earlier on, you know it's a little bit easier to monitor slash um, treat for than if it's in an advanced <coughs> stage. So, um, a fun fact for you is that if it's left untreated, it's a high probability of a 90% of mortality rate. So it's just kind of like kidney failure. Once you got it, you got it. And 
past that point of recovery. But for those that do get treated on in the early stages, they have about an 80 to 90 percent recovery rate. So there is hope. <laughs> you just a lot of hope, yeah. Got to catch it on early. So uh, if you notice your can your cat's not feeling well, don't hesitate to take it to the vet people. Listen, you know, right there. Um, <laughs> Uh, so prevention, just low-fat diets, um, weight management, you know, making sure that they're not consuming too much on a daily basis. Like I said, like my grandma's cat, don't be doing what she's doing. Um, avoid stressful events, so a constant moving of things around the house or tracking in a lot of people in and out. Um, and then obviously those regular vet checkups. I know it sounds terrible, you know, it's costly, but if you're going to be a pet owner, please just do it. You're going to save yourself more money in the long run if you just get those regular vet checkups instead of spending thousands of dollars in medical treatments. Um, oops. So there are my sources. Okay. And any questions? Any questions? <laughs> yeah. Uh, cows get fatty liver disease too, by the way, especially dairy cattle. Mm -hmm. uh, how about dogs? Yeah. I can't. I can't bring out an answer. I don't. Not. Not so much. I don't know. Not sure. Other questions, comments? Okay, if not,